Um, so next up, uh, we've got the great grandson of the Leicester suffragette, Alice Hawkins. Please give a warm welcome to Peter Barrett. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, hello everybody. Uh, I think the first thing I'd like to say is that I'm so pleased to be here this evening and be part of the petition and the movement to, to have a minute's silence. I mean, we're going through the centenary years of the suffragette movement. 2003, the formation of the uh, WSPU. My great-grandmother's first arrest was in 2000, uh, 1907, 2007 centenary. Next year, we've got the centenary of the, of, of the uh, tragic event. So I think it is important that we do remember and commemorate these major events in our heritage, our national heritage. Um, for me personally, I first learned about my great-grandmother, who was a suffragette, Alice Hawkins, uh, when I was a boy of no, no more than seven or eight. Uh, I, would used to, I used to go around my grandfather's house uh, in Leicester when mum and dad were working in the shoe factories of the town. I was on holiday, I'd go around granddad's house. And he, granddad was one of Alice's six sons. And he'd sit me down, as most grandfathers or grandparents would do, and tell me stories about his, his mother Alice. Um, granddad often used to go on the suffragette marches himself. It was very much a family affair. He would tell me stories. And I do wish I could remember more stories than I might tell you tonight. Um, but, you know, it's women's history in the making, and, and I've taken it on my passion, as a passionate hobby in life, to speak to schools, groups and society, because we have to remember what those valiant women did all those years ago to gain this very basic human right that we all have today, the right to vote. I think it's a very important thing, and particularly young people in society. I do implore them to put a value on, on that vote. I believe if they vote, they will make a difference in society. I give the vote to 16 and 17 year olds. It's about time they were better represented in Parliament today. Um, the story of Alice is a fantastic story. Uh, she wasn't a well-to-do lady. She was um, one of nine children born into absolute poverty in 1863. But she was a radical. None of the other sisters and brothers were, she, but she was radical. Why we don't know, but she was. And from an early age, Alice was a strong socialist. Socialism ran through her very veins. And uh, she was a strong trade unionist all of her life. Um, but after 20 years of campaigning in the trade union movement and in the, um, in the Independent Labour Party, in 1907, not as a suffragette, she actually came down to, uh, to here to central London from Leicester. It was the day of the state opening of Parliament. The women, Alice went to a suffragette meeting in Hyde Park. 300 women were there, Sylvia and Christopher Pankhurst included. They were hoping to hear of news in the King's speech that day of a bill to go through Parliament that would finally give women the vote. There was no news that day of such a bill. So Alice and others marched into central London to Parliament Square and they protested outside the gates of Parliament Square, of Parliament itself. A pitched battle ensued that afternoon with mounted police and I have at home Alice's own book of press cuttings from that day and I have the uh, national newspaper report of the magistrate proceedings because Alice was arrested with 28 of the women that very day in 1907 and taken to Cannon Road Police Station and put in the cells. And that the next day, Alice was imprisoned along with the 28 of the women, including Sylvia and Christabel Pankhurst. And the family believed that whilst Alice was in prison on that first occasion, through talking to the suffragettes that she was in prison with, she actually decided to become a suffragette herself. So it's no wonder that just in the next few months, Alice formed the uh, Leicester branch of the WSPU. And I have to say, Helen's grandmother, Sylvia, was a key strength in Alice's life. Uh, they would, Sylvia would come up to Leicester to support Alice. And in 1907, uh, Alice invited the Pankhurst sisters to come to Leicester to meet the workers at the shoe factory where she worked. And during those few weeks in Leicester in 1907, Sylvia sketched what we believe to be Alice at work. And you'll find around here uh, the sketch that Sylvia Pankhurst drew all those years ago. So it's a fantastic story. I'm very proud of Alice. The family is Sue, my sister, Kate, my daughter. Alice was in prison five times. You know, she was, a, she was in poverty, she worked in a shoe factory, she worked long hours, but she kept her head up high and she fought for what she believed in. And Alice, to Alice, gaining the vote was a route to empowering women and to her it meant having more bread on the table. 
it meant more negotiating with the male trade units and the employers in Leicester to pay the women what was their rightly due. Because women in the shoe trade union in Leicester in the early 1900s were earning one third of the rate of a man doing the same job. You can actually understand how the likes of Alice felt, um, well, they felt they had to make some radical changes in their life and that's why she became a suffragette. But it's a story steeped in, in, uh, in great uh, highs and lows. I mean, her local MP was Ramsay MacDonald. <coughs> they were like-minded socialists and she knew Ramsay MacDonald and with Mrs MacDonald, she'd formed the Women's Labour League in 1906. But MacDonald criticised Alice for her militancy, said she was doing no good to the cause of women's rights. <laughs> so five times she went to prison twice in Holloway Jail, the second time she, she went was uh, Black November in uh, 1910, uh, three times in Leicester. On one occasion, she, um, Alice and other suffragettes went to a golf course in, in, near, near to Leicester and in the dead of night dug boats for women out the potting green. <laughs> yes, that's right. And deciding their, work wasn't, their night's work wasn't done, they, um, they built a bonfire and <laughs> she went to prison. But, um, I mentioned uh, Alice invited, inviting Sylvia Pankhurst to come to Leicester. Well, later in life, Sylvia wrote several books, and she mentions Alice. She said, I moved to Leicester to work among the women in the shoemaking industry. Mrs. Hawkins, the WSPU secretary, was also active in the bootmakers' union. At night, I held meetings for the local SP... Uh, sorry, I'll say it again. At night, I held meetings for the local WSPU, amongst whom only Mrs. Hawkins, as yet, dared mount the platform. Why? because the other women were actually in fear of losing their jobs <coughs> if they stood up and spoke out against their lot in life. But Alice had worked for a workers' cooperative and they supported their employers and their employees. We're lucky as a family. We've got probably one of the best collections in the UK today that's still in the hands of the descendants of those valiant women and, and that's why we're so proud as a family uh, of Alice and the collection. We've got Alice's sash, her hunger strike medal, her prison notes, um, a moving letter of condolence from Sylvia Pankhurst in 1912, where one of their sons dies suddenly. And numerous postcards. We've got her notes from Holloway Jail. It is a tremendous collection. And I do have a website. If anybody would like to ask me afterwards, I'll, I'll let you know the website name. So I, I speak, I mean, I'm a, I'm a management accountant by profession, but I speak to groups and societies and schools where I can, as I said earlier about Alice, because I think that not only is it, is it a part of history, it's a moral story of today that you know women might be downtrodden but you can make a change in life you can pressure groups you can force change through you don't have to accept second best actually I brought several postcards along that belong to Alice so I thought we'd have be very close to the suffragettes tonight if I did that uh, this rather amusing postcard is from um, a, a genie ball of Kennington in London and she writes to Alice in 1911, December 1911 Dear Mrs Hawkins, I hope you are quite well after your holiday at Holloway Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right for time? Yeah. And probably of all the postcards that Alice collected, and the important thing to remember, these postcards that Alice collected, are many of them are photographs of the women who she worked and campaigned with, because if you were a public figure a hundred years ago, you'd often have your photograph on a postcard and it was your calling card. So we have many, many postcards and many leaders. Here's a postcard from Mary Gawthorpe, one of the national leaders, writing to Alice in 1907. After, clearly we've got postcards of Christabel, Sylvia Pankhurst. In fact, a story, my grandfather, one story I remember from my grandfather when I was a young boy, he said that on, a, on several occasions, the Pankhurst sisters would send up their family car to Leicester to collect Alice to take her off to a rally. And I've actually got a photograph of the, of the family car. And my granddad, who oh, he would be about uh, 15 then, said that the, uh, the chauffeur, not quite knowing where their, sent their terraced house was, they lived in a rented terrace, not quite knowing where their terraced house was, would slowly drive along one street and then along another street. And then he'd drive along another, trying to find the house. And apparently, by the time he pulled up outside their house, there were hundreds of children following this car, <laughs> this spectacle in 1907. And out Alice would come in her finery and off to a suffragette rally. Um, it's a fantastic story and clearly you can see I'm very proud of Alice. I mean, I'm a man, but Alice's husband supported her. Alfred would often go to, to public meetings to heckle public figures of the day when the women were excluded from the meeting. He heckled Churchill on two occasions. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the second occasion, well, actually, for those that know, Alfred was a member of the Men's Political Union for Women's Enfranchisement. Uh, and uh, on the second occasion, when he heckled Churchill at Bradford, the stewards, it was on the first floor of the building, as soon as he interrupted Churchill, they lifted him off his feet and threw him down the stone staircase, and he broke his leg. So we have Alfred in the uh, hospital in Bradford in November 1910, with Alice imprisoned in Holloway on that same occasion. In fact, the Men's Political Union sued the Young Liberals of Bradford for damages the following year, and Alfred got £100. When I first met my mum's cousin Madge about eight years ago, a, a granddaughter of Alice, I said to Madge, tremendous amount of money in those days. Madge, what, whatever did Alfred do with it? She said, he drank it. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. So, but June, 19, June next year will be not only a day to commemorate Emily Davison and those tragic events, it will be a day to commemorate what those valiant women had to do all those years ago to gain this very basic human right, the right to vote. And I'm so pleased to be part of that. Um, but also, I think it's a day, it will be a day to remember what women around the world are doing today, fighting for their human rights. I think it's equally important for that. Um, my mum died this year, but my mum remembered her Granny Alice, they lived together for, for many years, and when I first put my talk together some years ago, and I said to my mum, what do you remember about Alice, uh, mum? And she, oh, she'd say, oh, I don't know, I can't remember. But after a few moments, my mum, her eyes lit up, and she said, do you know, she said, when I was a young girl, <coughs> excuse me, mum, excuse me, my mum said that when she was a young girl, Alice said to her, you must use your vote, we suffered for it. And aren't those true words? You must use your vote, we suffered for it. Well, I'm going to finish these few minutes by finishing the, this short talk the way I believe my great-grandmother would have finished her public speaking a hundred years ago. Let the clarion call go out. Votes for women. Thank you. Thank you.